Hello and good afternoon everyone. My name is Amini Asilah Binti Majid and today I will be presenting about my thesis title Application of Bacteriosin Mycin as a Biopreservative in Food Product. These are the contents of the slide that I will be explaining today. In this era of globalization, various types of foods can be consumed by humankind. Processed foods are expected to be safe to consume, but depending on the precautions taken by the food handlers, foods can become microbially contaminated. Industries have used various ways to improve food shelf life and quality, such as the use of the preservation method. Chemical approach is the most common approach for food preservation. However, chemical preservatives such as nitrate is harmful. Therefore, food safety and quality can be achieved by using modern techniques such as biopreservation by bacteriosin nicin. Next, moving on to following statement of this study. First, consumers are becoming increasingly worried about the health consequences of their dietary choices. Second, harmful effects related to food intake lead to the preference for fresh and natural foods processed with minimal or no synthetic ingredient. And lastly, thermal treatment in food alone is insufficient to control the growth of pathogenic bacteria in foods. The significance of this study are first, to assist people in the food industry to preserve various types of processed foods. Second, to create awareness of why natural preservative is an excellent option to replace chemical preservatives in food products. Next, the objective of this study are first, to describe the sources of bacteriosin nicin, second, to determine the recommended level of nicin for application as biopreservative, and third, to expand the effect of nicin application in food products. Next, the research questions for this study are first, how does nicin been produced for the application in food products? Second, what is the recommended level of nicin used in food products? And third, what are the effects of nicin as a biopreservative in food products? The utilization of microbes and their metabolites goes back to prehistoric time. Bacteriosin was first utilized in 1951 despite being developed in 1928. In the 1960s, Food and Agriculture Organization and the World Health Organization recognized nicin, a bacteriosin produced by Lactococcus lactis, as a food preservative. Bacteriosin was bacteriosin over a group of different antimicrobial peptides that are made by ribosomes. It is derived from gram-positive bacteria, particularly those produced by lactic acid bacteria. Bacteriosin like nicin prevent microbial infection during manufacture, making them a suitable food preservative for fruits, dairy, meats, and other foods. Nicin, a 34 amino acid bacteriosin generated by Lactococcus lactis, has the potential to stop the growth of microorganisms in foods. Next, sources and production of nicin. The fermentation of lactic acid bacteria can be used to make nicin. The pH and the type of medium where the lactic acid bacteria grow affects the amount of nicin produced. For example, in corn strip liquor powder modified medium, pH 6.5 is used to produce 2750 IU per ml of nicin. Meanwhile, in MRS medium, pH 6.8 is used to produce 1635 IU per ml of nicin. Next, moving on to simultaneous saccharification and fermentation. In this method, lactic acid was produced from corn stover, a common agricultural byproduct. By using this method, 1635 IU per ml of lysine is produced. The third method is co-utilization of defected rice bran and defected soy meal. Three procedures were involved in this method. First, separate hydrolysis of defected rice bran and defected soy meal for fermentation. Combine hydrolysis of defected rice bran and defected soy meal for fermentation and simultaneous hydrolysis of defected rice bran and defected soy meal for fermentation. Defected rice bran could be used instead of carbon source to help lactococcus lactis grow and produce nicin. Meanwhile, defected soy meal could be used instead of nitrogen source to boost lactococcus lactis growth and enhance nicin production. In this method, a maximum nicin output was produced where 3,630 IU per ml of nicin titer was produced. Several food products use nicin as biopreservative. To be effective, these food products should use the recommended level of nicin. 
first 19 inches products. This is from Crossdivia, Staphylococcus, Listeria, and Lactobacillus are inhibited from growing at the recommended level of 12.5 mg per kg of 19 inches products. Next, 19 in meat products. Red meat contains Bacillus cereus, a potentially dangerous bacteria. Several researchers found Bacillus cereus not just in raw meat but as well as in meat products. Niacin acts as a natural preservative to stop spores from germinating and spreading in meat products. For meat products, niacin was used in processing at 12.5 to 25 mg per kg. Next, niacin in fishery products. Fresh fish are perishable in nature. Therefore, the seafood industry is always looking for innovative techniques to preserve them. Biopreservation by bacteriocin niacin has enormous potential to preserve fishery products. Niacin has high antibacterial action against food spoilers and pathogenic bacteria in fishery products. The recommended level of niacin to be used for fishery products depends on the type of the fishery products. For example, in reef caught fish fillets, 200 IU per ml of niacin was used for preservation. Meanwhile, in cold smoked salmon, 20 mg per kg of niacin was utilized with high pressure cooking. Next, niacin in Food juices. The variety of juice products in the market, combined with innovative preservation techniques, makes them even more desirable. Nicin was utilized in the food juice sector to control Anisacrobacillus acidocerostis. The recommended level of nicin to be used depends on the type of food juices. For example, nicin was administered to orange juice at 5 IU per ml for preservation, meanwhile in apple juices, 2.5 IU per ml of niacin was used to preserve apple juice. Next, niacin in vegetable. Minimal processing technique give vegetable the ability to maintain their quality for a longer period. Niacin limit the growth of pathogenic microorganisms in vegetable prepared for consumption. Treatment of niacin at 2.5 and 5 mg per kg demonstrated a substantial decrease in the population of Listeria monocytogens in lettuce. Nicin has several effects in food products. First, product shelf life. Nicin is capable to improve the shelf life of food products. For example, nicin treatment delays spoilage in cheese products up to 37 days compared to 14 days without it. And other than that, nicin treatments extend the shelf life by 14 days for food and vegetable smoothies. Next, inhibition of pathogenic bacteria. There is the potential for microbial contamination at any point in the process from manufacture to consumption. Therefore, niacin can be used for inhibition of pathogenic bacteria in foods. For example, niacin inhibits Listeria monocytogens in ready-to-eat meat. And other than that, niacin's action on gold bacteria inhibits mold and E. coli in orange juice. Third, reduction of microbial activity. Microbial activity of food can be reduced when treated with niacin. For example, the meat samples treated with 50 and 75 mg per kg of niacin had significantly lower aerobic bacillus series counts than the control sample. And other than that, the population of Staphylococcus aureus in cheese is reduced less than the control sample when treated with 10 mg per kg of niacin. Lastly, physical chemical properties of food. The sensory qualities of food are a significant factor in determining whether or not a consumer will like it. For example, niacin treatment improves orange juice quality and color without changing the pH. And other than that, niacin treated cheese products had a pH range of 4.99 to 5.06 indicating stability and niacin treated cheese products had a stronger test than the control sample. According to the findings of this study, niacin has the potential to serve as biopreservative in food products, thereby reducing or eliminating the need for the addition of chemical preservatives. Within the scope of this study, numerous recommendations concerning the amount of niacin that should be utilized for biopreservation purpose in food products were discussed. Further study is needed to address the issues related to effects of niacin application in food products and to determine the optimum level of niacin application in food products. That's all for me. Thank you.